Commercial airlines have been in operations for over a century, servicing routes around the globe. On March 8, 2014, Malaysian Airlines Flight MH370 simply disappeared into thin air. Endless conspiracy theories, rumors, and myths continue to spiral. After all, how could 239 passengers and crew on board just simply vanish without a trace? One of the greatest mysteries in aviation history is the unfinished tale of the flight of MH370. We'll be reviewing the first episode of the new tell-all Netflix documentary about this mysterious flight. So strap in. About the episode. The fresh Netflix release takes a deeper look into the international mystery surrounding flight MH370. The three-part documentary revolves around the mystery of the missing aircraft and the tragic story of those on board. Families have been ripped apart and left without answers when flight MH370 took to the skies and never landed. Directed by Louise Malkinson, MH370 the docuseries brings on board people who were the first responders to the incident, as well as specialists and experts who have been working hard over the past nine years to scrub out answers, only to be met with a dead end each time. The first episode lays out details of everything that happened on the day up until moments after the flight went missing. Family members describe the first phone call after receiving news of the disappearance. It captures the emotions, sorrow, and heartbreak of family members who spent days in limbo, hoping for a sign of a call from their loved ones. Then it dives into the trauma and experiences of the family members over the first few days after the crash. The episode shows us a detailed recalling of all the events, sights, and sounds from the harrowing event, and the big recurring question of what happened to flight MH370. And more than anything, it captures the panic and the anxiety surrounding a missing aircraft and the idea of 239 people just disappearing mid-air. The gut-wrenching testimonies of those involved in the tragedy put you in the shoes of those who lost everything that unfortunate evening. What happened to MH370? When the clock struck 1241, under the cover of darkness, Malaysian Airlines Flight MH370 takes off from Kuala Lumpur International Airport. Nothing is out of the ordinary. Weather conditions were satisfactory, and no severe turbulence was reported. This was supposed to be just another regularly scheduled flight for the commercial airliner. It cruised over the China Sea and was about to exit Malaysian airspace shortly after 1 a.m., MH370 was now entering Vietnamese airspace and would be communicating with their air traffic control. The captain gets on the radio and bids Malaysian ATC farewell. Malaysian 370, contact Ho Chi Minh 120, Right after that goodbye message, things get out of control and the flight goes electronically dark. This is the start of our mystery. Malaysian airlines and authorities scramble to find answers before the flight scheduled arrival and find the now missing aircraft. Four hours after the flight was expected to land in Beijing, the news hit the international media. The clock was ticking and everyone was asking the same question. Where is flight MH370? Conspiracy theories started flying in the air. Talks of hijacking, explosions, a deliberate crashing. Everything was a possibility and nothing was left off the table. A press conference was held to break the terrifying news that the aircraft was declared missing. Many families had already gathered around the airport in hopes to pick up their loved ones. Instead, they were met by an official who took them to a hotel and broke the tragic news, something straight out of anyone's worst nightmare. A family member of one of the passengers on board describes the room with grieving and howling relatives. According to him, it was nothing short of a living hell for all those who were there. They make desperate attempts to try to contact their loved ones by calling them on their cell phones. The odd thing is, nearly all the cell phones seem to be ringing and trying to connect to the other end. With no one to answer on the other end, the calls went to voicemail. Despite this, one of the most peculiar things to happen was one of the children of the passengers claimed to have received an incoming call from their father on board. But before being able to pick it up, the call ended, drowning out any last glimmer of hope. A twist of events. The entire world was on the lookout. Military from different countries and countless search and rescue teams were deployed on trying to find the missing aircraft and retrieve its lost passengers on board. Two days into the search mission, a new piece of information arose. 
Malaysian officials and military claimed that the flight had strayed hundreds of miles off its intended course and traveled for nearly another hour before going missing again. It could potentially have flown in the opposite direction towards the Strait of Malacca, blowing the area of investigation wide open. The Malaysian military spotted a jetliner in this newly proposed direction, but could not say with 100% assurance that it was the missing jetliner. This raised even more questions about what could have happened thousands of feet up in the air that caused the pilot to take such a drastic turn, if he did at all. 40 ships and 32 aircraft scattered over the Andaman Sea and the South China Sea scouring the surface of the water for an oil slick or floating pieces of aircraft debris trying to find the missing jetliner. The aircraft couldn't be in two different locations, and yet, no evidence was made public. What could have happened? The episode operates in parallel. While it lays out everything that happened, it also has experts and aviation journalists trying to make sense of the whole incident. Pilots and aviation experts from all over the world reached out to each other trying to crack at this impossible mystery in the days following the incident. The episode follows the insights of pilots, engineers, scientists, and even legal experts coming together to try to figure out what could have happened. It started to seem like even Sherlock Holmes wouldn't be able to solve this one. The documentary tags along with scientific journalist Jeff Wise, who explains how the self-titled independent group also launched their pro bono investigation into the disappearance. He described a gap in communication on part of the Malaysian authorities and how the entire world was in this case, grasping at straws, trying to figure things out. Another such group called the Tom Nodders also came into being, consisting of experts and laymen scanning satellite images of the area and trying to find the aircraft. Tucked in her home in Florida, amateur photographer and Tom Nod volunteer Cindy Hendry stumbled on something in her search. In the episode, she describes the process of being randomly assigned satellite images of the potential crash and disappearance area and having to stare at black scans hoping to find something. While doing just that, she stumbles on something. A dot of white in a sea of black, potential debris of the missing aircraft in the South China Sea off Vietnam. Cindy notified everyone she could, but was puzzled by what happened next. On the 15th of March, nearly a week later, things got even more confusing. The Malaysian Prime Minister in a press conference declared that there is confirmation that the aircraft did in fact take the detour and is somewhere west of where it was originally scheduled to fly. He also announced that they would be concluding their investigation into the South China Sea. This spiraled things further and put old theories into question and new ones into place. Another development was that a satellite communication service, Inmarsat, had its systems on board and was still receiving pings from the aircraft hours after it had gone missing. This meant Flight MH370 could have been in the air for hours after it had gone off the radar. This meant that the flight disappearance had just turned into a criminal investigation. The First Theory The episode further delves into the incidents leading up to the press conference by the Malaysian Prime Minister, which declared all members on board dead, despite no physical evidence to prove that. Towards the end of the episode, Aviation expert Jeff Wise lays out his theory about what may have happened to the flight. His take on what happened pins the incident on a mass murder-suicide initiated by the captain. Captain Zahari Ahmad Shah, the veteran pilot, could have taken the flight as scheduled and in the absence of the co-pilot, taken over the situation. It's speculated he locked himself in the cockpit and depressurized the entire cabin, putting everyone on board in jeopardy with only enough oxygen to last a mere 15 minutes. It was after this that the captain flew MH370 straight for six hours and then deliberately ditched it into the Indian Ocean, drowning himself and the souls of 238 others on board. The episode ends on a bit of a cliffhanger, dropping hints about another Malaysian Airlines crash killing all on board. Flight MH17 shockingly occurred in the following four months after the disappearance and reveals much more sinister forces at play in the whole incident. Did the story of the missing aircraft send shivers down your spine? Did the idea of air travel haunt you when you first heard the news of the missing aircraft? Please share this story and keep the narrative alive. The survivors of the missing deserve closure. This conversation keeps pressure on the responsible parties to be held accountable. We here on this channel issue our sincere condolences to the families affected by Malaysia Airlines 370. 
Stay tuned for a review on the second episode of Netflix's documentary series, MH370.